comeback to They Did What? Your source for the internet's craziest, most entertaining stories where I go with them, analyze them, and most certainly make fun of them. Today, I'm going to do an update or a part two, and probably the last update of the story I covered about a month ago, which Reddit title was, Girlfriend of four years I was planning on proposing to flushed away her future with me by sleeping with a bunch of guys and parting away her savings. And guys, that's all about the guy, you all, if you saw the video, recall about him spending all those years with that girlfriend of his, who it turns out is a complete wreck. A liar, a cheater, cheating with lots of dudes, a uh, drug addict, alcoholic, you name it, a complete mess. And this guy kept having her in his life. And finally, in the end, you all recall where things went. And now we're on to part two, where ultimately, and I say ultimately because this all happened in the past, that guy finally sees her true colors and is done with her and has turned around his life. However, you're going to see that even after he broke up with her, this girl, who's a train wreck and an addict, can't let him go. And she's always trying to get back into his life. And because he's a bonehead and he is a white knight, he keeps letting her and she's bringing turmoil into his life. And so this is a lesson of what not to do. It's important I share these from time to time so you guys can be so disgusted by these guys that you don't make these same mistakes. Or you, you see these signs, so maybe your your brother or best friend or somebody doesn't do what these guys do. And it's just one mess after the other. So there's a lot of lessons here. You get lessons and entertainment. And in the end, the guy will learn, and you will see there. So you can all feel, even though you want to probably want to throw your beer bottle. If you're watching this at home, you're going to want to throw something at the TV. Don't wreck your TV because I'm don't don't shoot the messenger me for sharing this story here. Or drive the car off the road if you're on the, on the road hearing this story. This guy will learn. But yeah, you're going to want to punch him. He says, uh, sorry that part two has taken us so long to put out, but life has been quite busy. First, the two things I get in the comments the most is advice, but seeing as it was over a year ago, it's a moot at this point. Uh, the advice is actually probably a lot of things about yourself and self-improvement, so this type of thing doesn't happen again, dude. Uh, second, it's as, if I told, it's, a, it's as if I told her brother about the possibility of, the, of his newborn not being his. I put a letter in his mailbox before I left the town. I recently found out that he got a paternity test and the kid is not his. Not sure if that was my letter or not. And with all that out of the way, I will guess I'll get on with the story. My job started back uh, right up after the last post of my story. So I threw myself back into work. Good. Keep yourself busy away from this wacko. My career is very feast or famine. So in the spring, I can work as much as I want. The next two weeks, I work seven days a week, 12 hours a day. Holy crap. That's a grind. To keep, it, to keep uh, all that went down from my mind, the only time I saw or talked to Callie was when I went to go to repair her mom's door. I'd only answer with as little as possible and try not to show how hurt I was. Well, he should repair the door. It's the least he can do for breaking it down and all that. You all remember from the previous story. Uh, of course, she begged me to take her back, but uh, I was done. That doesn't mean she wasn't blowing up my phone with calls and texts, and I ignored them all. Good. Block her. After those two weeks, I decided to take Sundays off as I was invited to a wedding. The wedding was really good, even though I couldn't shake the thought of how I was planning on proposing to Cali. So even though it was a really good time, it was bittersweet. I did meet a woman, though. She had just left the city because she's got to have a bad relationship. We ended up hanging out with each other immediately and helping each other immensely. For the rest of the story, we will call her Angel. Well, he's going from one chick to another. Now, in this situation, this, she's actually going to going to help him, obviously. But uh, ordinarily, a guy gets out of years of a very twisted, effed up relationship, toxic. That's the best way to describe it. You need time on your own to heal and reflect and figure out where you went wrong. But some guys, it does help to, you know, get a new chick to help move on from the other one. If, it's, if he's lucky and it works out. Next Saturday after the wedding, I decided to go to my friend's house after work. We had a few, and I told him everything right away. After regaling him with what basically was the original Reddit post, he looked me in the eye and says, Well, this will be a lot easier if I to tell you then. I replied, Tell me what? He then proceeds to tell me about his Christmas party. For some background, I let him take her to his Christmas party because he is a close friend and she's what I thought was a loyal girlfriend. Oh boy. The way he told me it was that Callie got super drunk and went to some random dude's room that night. Awesome guess. That makes six, but at this point, that doesn't want to even matter. I asked him why he hasn't told me back in December when it happened. He said it was it was something he didn't want to do over the phone. I get that, but it would have made, maybe saved me a lot of trouble, but he didn't know what I was going through. Come on, get the fuck out of here. If, if your buddy's girlfriend was cheating, 
you would tell him immediately, whether it's by phone or text or a smoke signal or anything, to let him know, you know? You would think this would be the end of my story, but it is not. Callie's mom starts calling me to see if I knew where she was because she was disappearing for days at a time. Oh, her, her, her drug addict daughter's disappearing days at a time? Imagine that. Now, I was still messed up and didn't actually want anything bad to happen to her. I started answering her calls again. Smack! That's stupid. It was a mistake. I think maybe just doing that straight straight block is probably the best course, but I always had been on good terms with my exes. It was kind of a point of pride for me. Dude, so they can take advantage of you? This chick is nothing but trouble. It's been horrible to you. And you want to leave on good terms with her? She's a drug addict. Her, she, you know how she's lying? Her lips are moving. She was in a bad spot. Not going to work, drinking, with drugs, blowing through her savings. Just a total downward spiral. I still would love for her, even though after all I went through, so I tried to help her get better. Smack! Yeah, where'd that nice guy treatment get you before? Of course she's on a downward spiral. She's a drug addict. And drug addicts do nothing but take advantage of people, lie, cheat, steal, all that. And you want to help her? Bro, you, you are not helping yourself, okay? You got to take care of you. I would talk with her and bring her back to her mom's a few times. I thought it was cool with trying to help her, but e but then the spa weekend I was going to propose to her came up and came upon me. I'd already spent like $2,000 for the weekend with no refund, so I went alone. It was so depressing. Yeah, if I'd go to a spa too, I'd be depressed too. A guy going to a spa, really? Spas are not really my thing. I also couldn't get the thought out of my head that someone I love would rather throw away their life than be with me. Bro, there was every sign possible that she was garbage and you chose to ignore them. And then because I started letting her back in my life just to witness her become a worthless human being, instead of ignoring her, those thoughts started to swirl my brain box. Needless to say, when I got back for the weekend, I was in a bad spot. I ended up having to take a week off from how depressed and suicidal I was. During that time, Angel and I talked a lot. She had me realize that letting her back in my life was a super bad decision. Well, shout out to Angel for helping you out, speaking some common sense to you. This guy, maybe it's a good thing this guy's seeing this angel gal because clearly he left his own devices. He just is a, is a, a bonehead. And by the way, guys, he does end on a higher note eventually. <laughs> After that week, anytime she would call or text, I would just tell her to fuck off or not to answer. How about you block her number? Don't answer, dude. So you just you let her in. You, you want the drama. Me and Angel became much closer, too. Hanging IRL sometimes as well. She lived two towns over, so we could not see each other as much as we wanted to. One thing led to another, and we started seeing one another. Well, if she was smart, she'd say, Okay, I'm willing to go down this path with you in spite of your you know, past with this other woman, but I don't ever want you talking to her, hanging out with her, seeing her, any of that stuff. And that would be reasonable. Seriously. Just casually, as I still plan on moving and was not quite ready for someone in my life. It all went well for about two months, but... But the BIT weaseled her way back into my life. No, you let her weasel her way back into your life. She's an a-hole, we can all agree, but you have been proven to be weak. And, you know, it takes a lot for you to learn your lesson. I stopped receiving any calls or messages from Kali for a month. So I figured she moved on, or, or died. Out of the blue one day, however, I got a text from her reading that she is in AA now. Well, it's about time. That she needs to apologize for everything as it's one of the steps. Yep, the 12-step 12 12 program or 10-step program, whatever it is. For context, my dad went through AA, and that's how he became part of my life once again after many years of not knowing him. Unfortunately for me, she knew that. She asked to me, and I said yes. Smack! If she let her write a letter, so you can say you're sorry to me for your 12-step program in a letter, and that's it. Because him seeing this girl is a terrible idea. She said, all, she said all the right words to me and gave a, what at the time seemed like a sincere apology. I told her I was still really upset, but was happy she was getting the help that she needed. Callie asked if she could call me for support, like and like the true idiot I was of the grand tale, I said, okay. Smack! What happened to you keeping her out of your life? Oh, I'm going to save her. I'm going to fix this damaged girl. I'm going to be a white knight. Bro, this is why you, you weren't getting any sympathy from people in the comment section. This is why you should be taking people's advice even if it was a year ago, because you, so you don't slip up. He's telling this story from, like, the past, guys, because he has supposedly learned and moved on. I told Angel about it later that evening, and she was upset. I don't blame her, because she knows this woman's trouble. I don't blame Angel one bit. If I was Angel, I'd say, nope, 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 that's it. We're, we're breaking up. 
you got too much baggage. She explained that she was just using me again, and she was, that she just didn't want to deal with how I was back two months ago, and she was uncomfortable with the whole situation. I explained about my dad and how I just cannot let someone working to get better and not succeed when I could have helped them. Dude, your ex knew about your father who was an AA, and she knew that'd be a point of weakness for you. She's diabolical. She planned this. Angel said she understood to do what I felt I need to do, but at least try to keep some distance. Spoiler for what's ahead. You know how she said she was an AA? Well, in the words of Tyler, the creator, that was a fucking lie. Lying about AA, huh? At first, she would just send a few texts here and there. Then calls started to come in a few weeks later. I would try to support her emotionally, but it started to get weird because she basically started to talk to me about her new boyfriend, Eric. I found it weird because I would never mention Angel. Callie knew I had someone in my life, and she would ask about her, but I told her it was none of her business. Well, at least she did that. But yeah, of course she's lying. How do you know when a junkie is lying? Their lips are moving. Everything was going fine, more or less, until Callie told me Eric was abusing her. Oh boy. There you go. Now Mr. White Knight has to save her. I knew the guy through friends of friends, but did not really know him. One night she calls me saying that she's terrified that he's going to do things to her. Begging me to pick her up to hide in my house. I get there and she's drunk out of her mind. Smack! This angel chick should have kicked you to the curb. Said you're a freaking lost cause. Uh-uh. I thought she must have fallen off the wagon. I say, I thought you stopped drinking. And all she could reply was, please hide me. He will hurt me again. So I took her to my house to help her out. Smack! You just can't let go. You deserve anything comes to you, dude. She kept slamming drinks and started trying to sleep with me. Slamming drinks? Why were you giving her drinks? Why were you laying her around alcohol? I told her there was no way that was happening. We both have other people we are seeing, and there was no way I would get with her again. And she cried, but let it be. Go back, handbook chapter 2. The next day, I had to go to work, so I left her there. You left her alone at your place? Yeah, that's smart. When I got back, she ordered more booze and was off her tits again. Angel called after work, wanting to know if she could come spend the night. I told her she could, but that Callie was hiding from her boyfriend at my house. Yeah, and how did Angel take that? Angel got pissed. I totally understand why. She called me a fucking idiot and hung up on me. I don't blame Angel. I'd hang up on your ass too. You are a fucking idiot. You were. This happened in the past. I have to wonder if this guy really likes to just get torn apart in the comment section, really. Um, Kelly, watching me on the phone, starts hitting on me as soon as the call was done. I got pissed and told her again that there was no way that would happen again, so, we went, so she went to call her new abusive boyfriend to pick her up. I made her hang up telling her I didn't want him in my house. So I drove her home so she could get back with him. What a shit show. Why don't you just have her freaking get a taxi or an Uber or a Lyft or something? I believe he's in Australia or he's not in the U.S. But regardless, bro, some, some people just need drama in their life. It's amazing. Me and Angel made up later in the week. Well, Angel's an idiot now for getting invo staying involved with you. Callie stops calling for a, a while. What? Two days? My life seems to get better yet again for another couple weeks. Of course, it did not last. One week while me and Angel were hanging out, Callie calls again. Why don't you block her number, dipshit? Crying asked for me to come over because she's afraid her new guy was going to beat her again. Because she knows that worked before, so she's trying again. I told her Angel was over, and the last time I saw her, it was not a good time. Angel, on the other hand, said we should, uh, we should, as she got to have an abusive relationship and could and couldn't have it on her conscience that we could protect her. Now Angel's following her for her crap. A lot of dumb people in this country, wherever it is. I think it's Australia. So we went over, and her original AP Joe was already there. I was blown away that she would invite us over while he was there. Why are you blown away? She creates drama and turmoil into your life, and you invited in. She was drunk as a skunk. So, so I finally had to sit down with Joe. He starts out by apologizing to me about him hooking up with her while we were still a thing. He tells me he knows how I felt about, about because now she he she has been seeing him and sleeping with Eric. Oh, so that's that's karma. I say they had only been together for a few months, and me and her had been together for years. I mentioned him that I think it was very cowardly him to not confess when he, I messaged him months ago and they were hooking up. He said Kelly begged him not to, to, to let me know and that he was still so in love with her that he would just do anything she said. Well, clearly she has that effect on guys. He's, she picks stupid guys. 
At that point, I just pitied him. As Joe was, was where I was last winter. <clears throat> you pitied the guy that was banging your freaking girlfriend, the girl you're going to propose to? <sighs> I tell him I should actually thank him because he helped me dodge a bullet. Later in the evening, Callie tries to con convince me, an angel, to have a threesome with her. Of course, we decline. That night was all types of strange. Uh, amazing, guys. This is why these stories are better than watching Netflix. After the night, I started not taking calls or messages again. There's an idea, Sherlock. Too much drama being in her whirlwind of insanity. I realized, too, that she never stopped drinking. She lies so she can have me back in her life. It was just a, a low using the knowledge of my father against me. You think? So I don't talk to her again until I leave town and we, li and we, and we lived in. The rest of the year, I just hung out with Angel. Ay, ay, ay. Some people have to infinitely suffer, guys. And you can't feel bad. I don't feel bad for this guy. This guy got everything he deserved because he was a fucking idiot. Got this gal, Angel, that was helping him out. You know, and uh, Angel should have left his ass. Now our guy will supposedly learn the end, but so bear with me here. Uh, we were sad to let each other go, but but we had have remained friends to this day. Now, so he parted ways with her. She got lucky. That winter, I moved in with friends that lived not too far from the island off the coast of the province I live in. My goal was to try and find employment on that island once work started back up in the spring. Living with friends was so healing. All I did was walk my dog in the bush, full on zen. Before I moved to the island for work, I received a message from Kylie. Oh, imagine that. Dipshit didn't block her yet. She informs me that she is on the same island I plan to move to. Stalker. Trying to get sober again. What the fuck? I go out there anyway because it is a very big island. Turns out where I end up in my RV on the island is like three hour drive from where she is. Well, good. Let her stay there. I lived in my RV and found a job that pays substantially more than my last one. Good for you, bro. I got back into some hobbies that I had been out of for some time and met a lot of awesome people. A month into living on the island, Callie gets a hold of me asking if I can give her a ride to the ferry to get her back to town. Again, what happened to you blocking her? I was going to be the main line anyway for a concert, so I told her I could. Smack! God, this guy's a freaking idiot. He just cannot let go. I really just wanted her off my island, for, to my, for, which is my new home. That's probably why I agreed. Yeah, say all you, try to convince yourself all you want, delude yourself all you want, dummy, but no. I pick her up and start talking to her, taking her to the ferry. As soon as she gets in, she begs me to pick up liquor. <laughs> yeah, she really needs liquor. Like, what the fuck? You came here to get sober, and you want to drink it as soon as you are not isolated in your mom's friend's cabin. She's an alcoholic idiot. She's a drug addict. Addicts don't stop unless you lock them away and throw away the key, and even then. I refuse, telling her it's my car and I don't have to do anything. She complains the whole time, as she does, all I can think of, how were you ever in love with this pathetic creature? Here's a question. How are you allowing this pathetic creature into your life still, dumbass? So, guys, this is what not to do. We ride at the ferry. Turns out I have to wait an extra wait an extra sailing for a drive on. Callie decides she cannot wait, so inquires if I would be upset if she just does does a walk on. I assume her I, I assure her that I would not mind one bit. In truth, I was relieved that I would not have to spend any more time with her. You don't have to spend time with her. You don't have to take her place. You don't have to take her calls, dipshit. I knew more than ever at that moment I would never want anything to do with her ever again. Oh, you didn't figure that out before? After all the cheating and betraying and her and all that, not to mention she's a drug addict and alcoholic and all these other things and the lying and the scheming. Not, not, now you're figuring this out? Well, better late than never. Fast forwarding time, my life is amazing now. Ah, good. I haven't been this happy in probably nine years. So I'm telling this story as a guide on what not to do. It also serves to let people know that you will recover from the hurt and there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And that gentleman... This very abrupt ending that he he got his shit together is the end. So this obviously happened a long time ago, but you could see how this guy repeatedly white knighted this girl. So when guys, when women pull this crap with you and you and you see their true colors, you cut them out completely. You block them completely, unless of course you want drama in your life or you can't let go, because addicts don't stop. Okay, and they'll constantly bring drama in your life, and you know they're lying because their lips are moving. And this guy just brought more and more. In. He was white knighting. He's a glutton for punishment. He enjoyed it, obviously. But thank the Lord, finally he had enough. And that was this. if he isn't lying. So there you go, guys. What not to do. And I wish this guy all the best. But gentlemen, don't let yourself in this situation. 
All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.